this is a story which I have I couldn't I couldn't believe when I first saw it. And the more that we research it, the more insane it actually gets. President Zelensky was here in Washington with his hand hat out, asking for 25 billion more from the U.S. Congress. By all accounts, they'll probably give it to him, although we might have an interim shutdown in the meantime. But after that, he visited fellow NATO ally Canada. And while he was in Canada, Justin Trudeau and the Canadian Parliament decided to honor President Zelensky in a session very much like we had our joint session, where they featured a, quote, Ukrainian freedom fighter. And it turns out that that Ukrainian fighter uh, who fought in World War II, as they described it, was a literal Nazi. Here's how they described it, though, at the time. Let's take a listen. Zelensky's speech received at least a dozen standing ovations. There was also one for this man, a 98-year-old Ukrainian Canadian who fought for Ukrainian independence against the Russians during the Second World War. Fighting for Ukrainian independence against the Russians in the Second World War is certainly one way to say it. The other way to say it, let's put this up there on the screen, our friend Yegor, is it was called the SS Division Galicia, which changed its name to the 1st Ukrainian Division in April of 1945 after already losing the war, the same month that Hitler killed himself. Calling a, quote, 98-year-old SS veteran a Ukrainian veteran is like calling Adolf Eichmann an Argentinian farmer. This is no joke, Crystal. <laughs> this was straight up, this is not, like he was a Wehrmacht soldier. No, straight up Waffen SS, actual Nazi soldier in the Second World War. A division, by the way, the SS Division Galicia, implicated in several like horrific instances during the Second World War, specifically targeting the Polish people who are very much waking up to this. The fact this is not a bigger scandal in the United States, and really even in Canada, who is only just now waking up to this and took a long time to even acknowledge or even apologize more than 24, 48 hours after this incident is out Outrageous. Put this up there on the screen. This is actually from a university professor and historian there. He says, quote, these are the photos that for those who are watching can see of the SS Galicia Division veteran who was given standing ovation by the Canadian Parliament. He published these himself of his division in training in Germany, standing in the middle of the first photo, second on the left in the second photo, if we wanna go ahead and show that one, and without a helmet near the machine gun in that photo. I mean, one of the things is he volunteered in 1943, okay, in the Ternopil region of Western Ukraine, which means he fought and served in this division at the exact times when it was both commissioned and was implicated in multiple atrocities, as I said, in the region. And unfortunately, look, this is going to be, you already know, this is going buck wild in Russia. Of because course. they're like, of course, you know, they literally honored a Nazi. But it also raises the uncomfortable truth of which many people in the West don't want to talk about is, yeah, there are some Nazi affiliated groups in the Ukrainian military who have a complicated history. And this is something I've even raised here on the show before. I'm glad to even show it is a lot of people think of the SS and of uh, the SS and specifically like the military units as just being all German. And it's actually not true because they have this entire idea of like an Aryan-like race. Himmler himself actually decreed that this has to be like the Galician division because they were quote, more Aryan-like than other Slavs. Oh my God. And so uh, <laughs> that's that, that's what he served That's in. what I we're mean, celebrating here they, in the Canadian parliament. That's who they celebrate. Now, look, I guess to be fair, it's become a big enough scandal now that the Speaker of the Canadian Parliament has had to issue an apology. To my knowledge, at the time of this taping, Justin Trudeau has not acknowledged this. But the crazy thing is, they had a meeting beforehand. Uh, the granddaughter of this uh, gentleman, I, if I guess if you can even call him that, uh, was actually posted a photo. And it's even more interesting, There was the reason they changed their name to the Ukrainian division is there was an entire effort after the Second World War to whitewash their Nazi affiliation and to portray themselves as uh, Ukrainian freedom fighters. Right. And actually over a thousand of them emigrated to Canada. So this is a very, very disgusting situation where they were explicitly used the name to portray themselves as these great freedom fighters to gain access to the West. I mean, this is a longstanding thing that a lot of people who fought within the SS did. Now, look, in terms of like, I don't know if this man served in the actual play, but you know, look, in terms of the whole idea of like the good Nazi and all of that, he volunteered for a Nazi division in 43, served until the end of the war, he was around, or at the very least, knew people who straight up slaughtered civilians and were implicated in the death and also the liquidation of Jews in the Eastern in the Eastern uh, European theater of war. 
I don't think there's any getting around that. And uh, these are not people who we should be celebrating. I cannot believe that they honored him, that Zelensky, you know, like, you know, and th the other thing is here, maybe you can forgive the Canadians for not knowing, okay? The, a lot of these people are idiots, they don't know. Yeah. Zelensky, he knew what was going on. Yeah. You think he didn't know? He's like, oh, he fought for Ukrainian independence in World War II. People in Ukraine, they know. They know oh, what that which means. Which side people fought on. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is one of the uncomfortable realities that was easy for a lot of people to acknowledge before the war and yeah. has become something that no one really wants to talk about anymore. But some of the great, like, heroes of Ukrainian nationalism committed, you know, incredible atrocities yes. during World War II fighting against the Russians on behalf of the Nazis. So one thing when I was talking to Yegor about this is I was trying to understand, like, you, like, was this an accident? Right. Did they know? Because when you hear freedom fighter against the Russians during World War II, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out then, okay, which side were you actually on? Mm -hmm. And one thing that he really wanted to impress upon me was that this is not like a one-off incident. First of all, we have seen numerous times the, you know, Ukrainian social media accounts posting photos of their soldiers with all yes. sorts of like Nazi insignia. And I don't want to play into the Russian idea that exactly. like every Ukrainian is a Nazi. That's far from Outrageous. the truth. Okay. So we're trying to be nuanced here and say, listen, there is an element. And certainly those who were the, the hard Ukrainian nationalists and continue to be the hard right Ukrainian nationalists have a lot of very uncomfortable Nazi ties and sometimes have Nazi insignia tattoos on their uniforms and tattooed on themselves. So I don't wanna play into like, you know, some blanket statements. But the other thing he was telling me is it's sort of akin to, you know, Southerners who wanna whitewash the Civil War and the Confederacy and the Confederate flag mm, yeah. and all of that, that there's been an ongoing project in Eastern Europe, in Ukraine, in the Baltic states to try to whitewash their quote unquote freedom fighters. And this has been going on, you know, under the radar of people who are and don't wanna be embarrassed by their like Nazi grandpa as Yegor put it right. to me anymore. And so this has been going on under the radar but for them to actually achieve this moment of having a legit former Nazi celebrate and receive a standing ovation from Trudeau and Zelensky, I mean, that's a whole other level. And in some ways it ends up being useful because it shines a light on something that's been going on underneath the surface here that really like Nazi apologia should not be mainstreamed. It should not be allowed to continue. It should be called out for exactly what it is, which you can see really clearly. Yeah, here. and I'm glad that he raised that and that we're actually, you know, look, it is a complicated history. I'm not gonna sit here and just say it was all easy. You know, and here's the uncomfortable truth. When the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union, a lot of those people were cheering them on. Ukrainians, Poles, a lot of these folks. You know why? Because they hated the Soviets. I get it. A lot of the Latvians, the Lithuanians, and here's the other uncomfortable truth. The Latvians, the Lithuanians, the Ukrainians were involved in some of the worst pogroms of the early, you know, what, 20th century. They had no love for Jews and they did not stand in the Nazis' way or at the very least, they helped them out. Some of the highest liquidation rates of Jews in the entire, like, Nazi regime happened in Eastern Europe and it was because, in many cases, of a willing and a compliant and some kind of uh, enthusiastic populace. I'm not denigrating the people who are the descendants of them today. I'm just saying, though, that at that time, you know, there are own symbols of nationalism when it's going to be so inextricably linked to that time period of World War II, we should be very, we should not be uncomfortable to pointing out some of the major moral quandaries around this and to also think about who we in the West are siding with and are supporting. And I think this is a very basic fact. It is, of course, unjust and horrific that the Russians invaded Ukraine, but it is also empirically true that U.S. provided and Western provided weapons have gone into the hands of straight up neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Yeah. It's undeniable. I mean, absolutely undeniable. You can decide, you know, the lesser of two evils, the enemy, my enemy is my friend, et cetera. But, you know, phrasing, framing this all in just like democracy and autocracy, you know, I see some people being like the front line of democracy is in the Donbass. And I'm just like, all right, sh shut up. I'm sorry. Like, that's ludicrous. Like, first of all, we're talking about one of the most corrupt nations in all of Eastern Europe. You should maybe go ask some of the people in the Donbass previous to this conflict who they had allegiances to. All I'm saying is, is messy, is complicated. None of this is justification for a horrible invasion. Just to show you like, n the world is not black and white. It's very gray. And yeah. In this case, it gets very- In this case, in though, case, it's, it's a little like bit black and white on bit, this one. <laughs> well, in this one, it gets a little Nazi gray yeah. uh, in terms of what those uniforms look like. And yeah. I, think it's, I think it's a tragedy, more so also, that people in the West 
they don't they don't want to admit this stuff. Only in Canada because they straight up honored him at the parliament. But how many people in the U.S. media are talking about this? Not one. I haven't seen a single media outlet here in Washington condemn Zelensky. You know Zelensky too. Listen, if you're gonna come here and shake your hat asking for money, maybe don't be honoring Nazis yeah. while you're over here. He, somebody on his staff. This is not doing him any favors. Somebody on his staff. Again, I you, you can excuse the idiot Canadians, maybe, although probably not. But they knew. There's no way that those Z people on Zelensky's staff, you know, the advanced staff and Zelensky himself, there's no way they didn't know who this guy was fighting for. Hundreds This is percent. coded language in Ukraine for, yeah, they fought on the side of the Nazis. You think that was a smart move? And then it gets to the uncomfortable question of like, hey, maybe they support it a little bit, or at the very least, like tacitly okay with it, as they are in their own government and in their coalition. So people can think we're unfair and harping on this, but like, you know, look, you know, we it, these are the people we're supposedly allied with. These are the people who are funding with a blank check. You gotta ask questions about your friends more so probably even than your enemies. It's also in a certain sense, like the logical end point of this ver black and white mm -hmm. Disney version of the war that you're gesturing towards Sagra, that if yeah. it's just like, the Russians are bad and the Ukrainians are good. Yes. Oh, here's a Ukrainian freedom fighter, quote unquote, right. he who was fighting against the Russians. He must be good. I mean, that's like the logical endpoint of this really silly, childlike version of events that we've been fed by the media. And so in that regard, it's actually not surprising that you would end up with something that is this egregious, just like, you know, literally celebrating a Nazi to own the Russians kind of makes sense as a logical conclusion of the direction that we've been heading in with all of this. So absolutely extraordinary. We should say, you know, there are a lot of uh, Canadian Jewish groups, obviously, understandably, right. Out. very yeah. upset about this state of affairs and wondering like we are, what the hell were you thinking and how can you let this happen? So uh, Trudeau and parliament under a lot of pressure now to uh, make amends for this state of affairs. But yeah, in terms of US media, pretty Let me much silent. Too. Where's the ADL, huh? ADL who's willing to call anybody an anti-Semite for anything anybody says about Israel or anything anybody ever says even about them. They haven't put out a single statement about this. Wow. This is the Probably, I mean, let, let's think about it. Since uh, Operation Paperclip, this is probably the most prominent celebration of a literal Nazi in the West in decades um, throughout all of the West. And these people don't have a word to say. They're complete and utter tools. So let's just keep that very clear. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.